Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this program. Uh, this is uh, Beholding Christ show and my name is Ben Fetcher and I'm excited yet again to bring to you the gospel of Christ because we are here for the gospel and not for anything else. For it is because of Christ that we are alive. And as you know, our show is about showing us Christ because when men look at Christ, when men see Jesus Christ, they are they are, their lives are transformed. The Bible says, beholding as in a mirror, we look unto Jesus, we behold him. And as, as we look unto him, as we behold him, we are changed into the same image. Because when we see him, we see ourselves. Because as he is, so are we in this world. My name is Ben Fetcher and uh, welcome to the show. And you'll enjoy because we have a wonderful, wonderful moment today. And before we get into the word, today I have a guest, but before I introduce my guest, I want us to pray and uh, we'll take it up from there. Father, we are so excited and delighted for this wonderful moment. Thank you for loving the, us this much that you have enabled us yet again to have a wonderful conversation, to know and to get in depth of your word, that we may uh, be established in the simplicity of the gospel that we will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes but will be established in the faith we thank you for that our lives are hidden in christ with god we thank you that today will be taught and revelation will flow freely and our lives will be transformed as our minds are renewed by your word and it is in jesus name we pray and we give thanks amen and amen and amen. So uh, allow me to introduce my guest. Uh, today we have a special guest. Uh, he is Samuel Onyango. <laughs> yes, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. So I would, I, would like to, I would like you to introduce yourself and help us understand who you are. Ben, as you said, Ben, my name is Samuel Onyango. Yeah. Uh, you, have been a, you have been long friends with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has been a couple of years and We've been growing in grace, and uh, as the word says, that uh, we should go and preach the word to the people, mm -hmm. so that each and everyone should understand who they are in Christ. Yeah, yeah. So Samuel Onyango, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically here from Nairobi. Okay. Uh, and I uh, fellowship in a church in town. Okay. We have a church in town called mm -hmm. Rocky Mouse each, each and every Sunday mm -hmm. from uh, twelve to three. Okay, yeah. so we have a child that meets from 12. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> not from <laughs> 8. <laughs> no. That, that is the, the custom and the tradition of men <laughs> that we must meet from yeah. 8 to yeah. around 11. We clap our hands, we worship, we sing some songs, then we hear the word, then we go home. But yours looks interesting that you meet <laughs> from, from, you say 12? 12. So maybe before you proceed, you can say hi to the people. Uh, Road to a mouse. Oh, hi, Road to a mouse. Thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. That is Samuel Anyango. We've been friends for quite some time and uh, we've known each other, not for any other business, but for the gospel. Actually, we got to know each other because of the gospel. Yes, because we had an encounter with Christ and Christ helped us to encounter each other in the, in the place of the gospel. And uh, I was also once part of a road to a mouse. Mm -hmm. I, so what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you said you are also wise. <laughs> I think I should think about that yeah. and uh, reconsider being part of Road to a Mouse again because uh, maybe even before you continue, what is it about Road to a Mouse? So this is how the name came. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me explain first the name Road to a Mouse. Mm -hmm. One day we were coming from a Bible study uh, up the Upper Hill and then uh, we were discussing about the after. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the death and the burial of Jesus Christ after him being uh, buried and crucified in each and everyone seeing that happen. And then when he rose again, the first uh, Bible study he had mm -hmm. when he rose again mm -hmm. was to the road to the mouse. He had two guys. Okay? You remember yeah. the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they, they went on 
are discussing about the word in Christ, expounding unto them mm -hmm. the scriptures, mm -hmm. the things concerning him, him yeah. by him I mean his death, burial, and resurrection. Because yes. that was now what he came to do for mankind. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, as we progressed, it happened like that. And then here we are, road to a mouse. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And on the, on the road to a mouse, their eyes were opened, right? Open. And they realized that they realized Christ that. is the message. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is interesting. And now you've, you've mentioned something very important that uh, the, he explained, he expounded to them things concerning himself and you said his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the kind of a direction I would like us to take as we talk about uh, what we are going to talk about today because I want us to, to see the, 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 the whole salvation thing what is salvation and how how do we get into the place of salvation? But before that, maybe I would like, uh, I would like to read a, a scripture in the book of Ephesians, mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter two. Uh, I know it is a very well known verse, but this is this is where I want us to start our conversation from. Ephesians chapter two. Uh -huh. Ephesians chapter two. I'm reading from the New King James version. Uh, my Bible is delaying. I don't know why it is, it is delaying. Yes, Ephesians chapter 2. You can get from verse, uh, from verse 8. Yes, the Bible says, okay, this is the King James Version, says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It says, For by grace are ye saved. So talking about salvation here, it says, For it is by grace that you are saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I want us to start it from there. So what does he mean when he says, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God? First of all, the writer of Ephesians was very, very peculiar. Mm -hmm. He said, and studied this, this uh, conversation with the word grace. Yeah. We need to understand what the word grace means. Mm -hmm. Because without understanding that word, you can never relate it to salvation. Yes, yes. So grace, uh, there are more explanations concerning the word grace. Yeah. Grace can mean God's riches at Christ's expense. Mm -hmm. That one we know uh, by, we know that one. And uh, another word also that means grace, according to Greek, it's mm -hmm. unmerited favor. Yeah. And decide kind of something yes. that you have you do absolutely nothing to get it. Pain. Yeah, it's free. It's free. Just like today, I come with a present I give you, mm -hmm. without you doing anything to me. Yeah, this is for you, Ben. Now that's grace. That's grace. That's grace. So it's uh, to the one receiving, mm -hmm. it's free. It's free. But to the one giving, <laughs> <laughs> is it free? No, 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 no. Especially when you're talking about salvation. Yeah. We all know what happened when mm -hmm. Christ was doing the work of salvation. Yeah. He had to present himself mm -hmm. as the offer, mm -hmm. the sacrifice for man. Because you see now, the thing is, man had sinned through Adam, okay? Yeah. By disobeying the instruction that were laid to him by God. Yeah. So after man sinning, now redemption had to happen. Mm -hmm. And there was a pattern to follow for redemption to happen. Yeah. There was, you know, as Romans would say, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So death had to be provided. Yeah. And man was not sufficient enough with himself to provide that kind of sacrifice yeah. for himself. Mm -hmm. So Christ Jesus had to come in picture to do the work of salvation. Mm -hmm. So it costed God absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. But to man it costed him nothing. Wow. That's why it is by grace through faith. Wow. Yeah. So we can say that uh, salvation is not, is not cheap. But it is free to the receiver. But to the giver, it costed him everything. Wow, amazing. And uh, it is very interesting that in our days, there are so many things that are attached to salvation. Like people say, if you, if you, if you want to say that you are saved, you ha we have to see what you are doing. You have, to, uh, you have to dress in a certain way. You have to talk in a certain way. You have, uh, I'm looking at your hair like I'm telling you I'm not saying it. <laughs> With yeah. the standards of men. Good thing it is by grace. <laughs> you have to have a certain hair, uh, hairstyle. Yeah. So what do you say about these things? Those are works. Mm -hmm. And Romans and Ephesians talks to us well concerning the works. Okay, mm -hmm. Let's read verse uh, 
verse 9. Yeah. Not works, <coughs> lest any man should boast. <coughs> that is salvation. Yes. Works. When the Bible uses the word works there, <coughs> it emphasizes on good works. <coughs> good works like shaving the hair that you've said, going to church in each and every Sunday, of which going to church each and every Sunday is good. But yes. it can never provide salvation for anyone. <coughs> Praising God. Giving, offering, tithes, all of that are good works. Mm -hmm. But what the word says is that it can never provide salvation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the, because there are, there are people who feel like uh, I've never sinned, I've never committed any mistake, but I've been a church boy, I've been a church girl, so I'm good to go. I don't need again to be saved because I've been good all, all this time. Mm -hmm. So, what can you say about that? What can you tell such a person? <laughs> Rest. The word says that you should rest. Mm -hmm. No, rest in the promises of God. Rest in what God has provided for you. Okay. God has not called you to work so that you can be acquitted treasures through works. Mm -hmm. No, it is only by grace through faith. Okay. Nothing else. Wow. Grace minus nothing. You have mentioned grace through faith. Mm -hmm. So, firstly, you said it is by grace mm -hmm. that grace is the unmerited favor. Yeah. Is that deserved favor? Mm -hmm. Is man receiving from God what he cannot and he has not worked for? True. Now you're brought in faith. Mm -hmm. So how does the two work? Grace through faith. Thank you. Is it by grace alone? Or is it by <laughs> grace through faith? And if it is by grace through faith, so where is the place of faith in this? Now this is it. Let me use an illustration. Mm -hmm. You're seated on that chair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what it takes for you to sit on that chair actually just to come and sit. Mm -hmm. What your work is not to observe and investigate if the chair is able to lift your career. Mm -hmm. Same way with salvation. The work that was provided on the cross for us concerning salvation was enough. That is by grace. It was by grace. Mm -hmm. It was him taking the first initiative minus you doing absolutely nothing to acquire that salvation. It was him doing all the work. Mm -hmm. So what he asked of you the only thing that you do, okay, to actually partake and make, you know, make what was provided for you a reality for yourself, okay, is by believing in what was provided. Believing simply means just to accept the offer mm -hmm. that was provided. Faith, as Pastor Androma would say, is positive response to what God has provided. Okay. Just believe what he has provided for you as enough. Okay, That's it. because there's someone who may think like you said it's free, but you're telling me to have faith. So is faith not another work? <laughs> no, faith can never be a work. <laughs> this water, you don't need anything to drink the water if you're thirsty. You just take it and drink it. Okay, yeah. so faith is receiving what grace has supplied. Sure. Grace supplies salvation mm -hmm. and uh, faith now is how we receive. Yes. So it's not like uh, we are coming up, yeah. working mm -hmm. out, trying to work hard to produce faith. Mm -hmm. And maybe I would like you to clarify this thing, because when we talk about faith, many people will think like, uh, I have to, you know, like Jesus is looking at you and where is your faith? I can't see your faith. And uh, there is this verse in, uh, in James, where James talks about, uh, it is by uh, faith without works is dead. And he talks about show me your faith, uh, show me your faith, mm -hmm. and show me your works. As in, you cannot say you have faith and it does not have works. Mm -hmm. And people feel like if I want to to be called among them that have faith, mm -hmm. there is something that I must do. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you're getting my. I'm getting your faith. Yes. See, there we go with the issue of context. Mm -hmm. Context is very important. Mm -hmm. Works has nothing to do with, with you being saved. All you need to be saved is belief. You know, there was a, there's a story that happened. Uh, I don't know, it's Peter who, when he was chained. Yeah. And then they were praying and then all of a sudden the chains fell off and then the jailer, seeing that, he was so shocked. And then he was like, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What was the reply? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Many instances in the Bible, we see very well. Even, even when Nicodemus came to see Jesus in the midst of the night, okay, he was asking, what, what will I do to be saved? You know? Because there was a big conversation that was going on there about you being born again. Yeah. And then a lot of things transpired. But Jesus just told him, believe. 
John 3.16 talks about it so the simplest verse in the Bible. Mm-hmm. God so loved the world. You know, this is how interesting it is that uh, everyone in the world knows about John 3.16. Yeah. Even some people who are not even believers. Yeah. They know John 3.16, mm-hmm. but they don't, they don't know it. They know it, but they don't know it. They know it, it. often. <laughs> yes, they, <laughs> they memorize it. it. Yes. Yeah. They can recite it, but they don't know it. Maybe you can put some clarity on that, John 3.16. Okay. John 3.16, because for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, mm-hmm. that whosoever believes, whosoever believes in him, shall not die but have everlasting life. Yeah. You know, there are key words there, for God so loved the world. Mm-hmm. When, when, when the Bible is talking about so loved the world, it's talking about each and everyone in the world. Mm-hmm. It's not talking about specifically to Christians or specifically to those who can recite that verse. So, no, no, no. so God is not a God of, criti- no, of Christians no. only? No, God is a God of the world, <laughs> everyone in the world. Is Jesus a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't think he's a Christian. So, so love the world. Yes, the world. Yeah. His love is channeled to everyone in the world. <laughs> And the requirement to, to you know to, to access everything that he has provided for us on the cross for free is by believing. Yeah. Yeah. So because he says for God so loved the world mm-hmm. that he gave. Mm-hmm. So in all this verse, you realize that it is God who is doing everything. He mm-hmm. is the one who is loving the world, mm-hmm. he's the one who is giving uh, his only begotten son. Then our part is to whoever believes, mm-hmm. then shall not perish. So the imperishability again is from God, but have eternal life. So also eternal life is again is from God. So there, it looks like the only part that is left for man is to believe. And that believing is not, you said it's not a work. Mm-hmm. It's to settle in what has already been, what has already been, provided. been provided. So that is the, the clarity of John chapter 3, verse 16. My, my viewers, I know you know that verse, but uh, uh, some people added some things like, uh, for God so loved the world that... He gave his only begotten son. That whoever uh, prays much, others say that whoever dresses in a certain way, others say whoever shaves <laughs> in a certain way <laughs> will not perish, but will have a lasting life. But it is good to read the Bible as it is. It does not say all those things. It says that whoever believes. So even you who is watching this program today, by just believing, you will not perish, but you have eternal life. You will not perish, but have eternal life. So again, it brings in the issue of uh, imperishability. I don't know whether you can say something about that, imperishability and eternal life. So basically, eternal life is, uh, is simply having God's life in you. Mm. The Zoe life in you. In yeah. The yeah. word life in Greek means Zoe. Mm-hmm. So when you believe every good thing, that is in God, that is in Christ Jesus. And one of them is eternal life. Knowing God as he is, as it will be expounded in the in the epistles later on. You know, it all comes to you when you believe. Mm-hmm. You know, believing means you have access to each and everything that has been provided for you in Christ Jesus. So thou sh- it's it's not about you living a thousand years of life mm-hmm. here on earth. Yeah. Yes, if you want, you can, mm-hmm. okay? because now you have the life of God in you. Yeah. You can actually rearrange things as you want, mm-hmm. because now you are the son of God. Mm-hmm. And, and there is nothing impossible to you, mm-hmm. because you are in God and you are in Christ. Yeah. Okay? But it basically means having the very life of God in you. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. That's it. You know, you're making, you're making it sound so simple. <laughs> and uh, how how many people think about the things of God? Because we have had like most of our young people, they say, "Ima we salvation manze ni kitungumu kwa sababu kuna requirements mingi." But how you are making it sound? It's just so simple. It's just like taking a glass of water. <laughs> That's how simple it is. Uh, Our God is not a God of you know of of, of, of a lot of. Confusion. Mm-hmm. The word is so simple as it is. Yeah. Okay. You are loved. You are blessed. Agree with it. Enjoy the life. That's so, it. So our main part is to agree with it. The only part that you do is one. Agree with it. Believe. That's the only thing we do. The script was already written before the foundation of the world, mm-hmm. and the script was God loves you. Okay. He has provided everything for you. Mm-hmm. you 
That's it. So that's the big question. That's the big Do you believe? And, and, and actually, <laughs> I don't know how believing is such a big deal. I don't know. Compared to works. You know, it is easier for people to work for salvation, to get salvation, than, than to actually to believe. And, uh, you know, there, there was a time Jesus had a conversation with these guys. And the guys were, when him and they were asking him, because I believe it is in the heart of every, every human being and every, every man, even, including you that is watching me. Everyone desires to, desires to do the works of God. Because as you said, it's like everyone wants to do something for God. And the disciples asked Jesus, I think this is in John chapter 6 from verse 28 and 29. Uh, what should we do to do the works of God? They were tired of staying. <laughs> what did you do now? <laughs> they were tired of staying. Man, say, you know this story about Jesus. You're just following. Yeah. You're just following. He heals the sick. He raises the dead. You're just there following. And uh, he is not telling you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and now you take the initiative to ask for yourself. Mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to do to do the works of God? And how Jesus responded is interesting because he told them in John 6 verse 29, okay, you want to do the works of God? This is it. Believe in whom that he has sent. That is that's how it. <laughs> that's how simple that was the answer. As simple as that. I bet they were expecting a more, you know, a more longer answer. <laughs> Guys, this, this thing So it's like they were disappointed. <laughs> in a way though. <laughs> but see, it was for their benefit for them to be given that kind of an answer. <laughs> And why do you think they were they were determined? They wanted to do something, and and actually, it's also in the in the in the hearts of many people today. They want to do something. They want to feel like. Why do you think it is so? It goes way further. It goes way back. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a thing that started during the disciple, disciples' times. Mm -hmm. It's something that started way further than that. Okay, when the laws were given. Mm -hmm. Okay, the notion that was believed to be in uh, in motion was for man to do okay it was all about do this and I'll do this okay? mm -hmm. so they were accustomed to that kind of thing mm -hmm. that for you, in order for you to acquire anything from god mm -hmm. okay you have, you have to, to do, do something so it has it it went on like that like that like that yeah mm. so that is what man grew knowing yeah and, and even in our childhood i think that is how we grew thinking that life should be yeah because you find that our parents, uh, they have to look for something that you have done so that they can so appreciate they can you. Award you. <laughs> they can award you. Yes, that is the word, award. But we realize that salvation is not an award. It is a gift. a gift. Wow. So so that is a mentality that has been there for ages, that I have to do something. You have to do something to get anything. To get anything from God. But now what we are seeing here is that in the simplicity of the gospel, it is not you doing something for God. Mm -hmm. It is God who has done everything for you. Now, you said about the law. And uh, I know this is any time the, the, the gospel of grace or we talk about grace, the issue of the law will always arise. Mm -hmm. So what was the purpose of the law and how are we supposed to relate with the law today? Great. So... You know, as as Moses, because Moses is the one who provided the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, when Moses provided the law, okay, there were requirements in the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, the requirements were, that, you know, the, for example, the Ten Commandments: mm -hmm. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, blah blah blah. Thou shalt not kill all of that. And then he went further and provided all the six thirty laws, you know, commandments. It was again as as man. The emphasis of the law was never to provide perfection to man. Mm -hmm. No. The gospel has always been simple. The gospel that Jesus Christ came to bring to mankind mm -hmm. when he came and walked up, that is the very gospel that has always been since the foundation of the world. You know, God God doesn't change. Okay. So the gospel has been there. It has always been there. Yeah. The requirements of the gospel has always been the same. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that man can ever do to get perfection. No work totally. Even uh, as the word says uh, yeah. concerning Abraham, that he believed God and it was counted for him for righteousness. righteousness. Yeah. It doesn't say Abraham, uh, you, know, be, you know, wanted to offer Isaac to God and it was credited for him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. That is works. You know, it yeah. doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. It's always about believing. So the law was never meant 
provide salvation mm -hmm. or righteousness for mankind. Okay. You know, it, it was just a, you know, I don't know. But how the gospel is, present, is presented, that is the major thing that uh, you know, contributed to that confusion in the first place. Okay. So the law was not meant to bring perfection. Mm -hmm. So the perfection that we are talking about here mm -hmm. can only be found in the gospel, mm -hmm. which is uh, in Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, Christ, this is where we minister grace. Uh, there is an, an interesting conversation that goes along uh, in the book of Second uh, Corinthians chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a conversation around the law mm -hmm. and uh, the letter and the spirit, Second Corinthians chapter 3, from verse, uh, from verse 6, it says, we can start from verse 5. Not that we are sufficient. I'm reading from the King James, 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, mm -hmm. but our sufficiency is of God, mm -hmm. who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter uh, killeth, but the Spirit gives life. Mm -hmm. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious so it's like a conversation between the law that is uh, the, the commandments mm -hmm. though there are some people who say that uh, there is a part of the law that crossed the cross mm -hmm. I don't know whether you heard they say, One thing you said that part of people, <laughs> <laughs> not the word. <laughs> yeah, not the word. Yeah. There is a part, a group of people that say there is part of the law that crossed the cross. Mm -hmm. the mostly uh, they say that uh, the ceremonial laws mm -hmm. of uh, sacrifices mm -hmm. was finished at the cross. Mm -hmm. But they say that the Ten Commandments crossed the cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to this conversation going on here in Second Corinthians chapter 3, mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Let's start from verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, yeah. not of the letter. Yeah. And the line the word ministers of the New Testament, mm -hmm. not of the letter, mm -hmm. but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit killeth life. But the, but if the ministration of the of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his constants, which glory was to be done away with. Mm -hmm. If you go to if you go to the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, the writer of Hebrews explains so well. Mm -hmm. Uh, concerning the issue of, of the law and everything. You see, the law was given at a specific point to serve a specific function mm -hmm. purpose. Mm -hmm. It was not given to, you know, forever. Forever. It had, it had, it had a purpose. It had a reason why it was given at that point in time, the way it was given. Yeah. And it will be very, very mm, dangerous, if I can use that word, to to say that after Christ providing each and everything for us. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ didn't just provide each and everything for us. He also as well fulfilled the law. Mm -hmm. All the requirements that were given in the law for man to fulfill. Yeah. Man we was have, not no, before, before we continue, we, have, we were having a discussion yesterday somewhere and some people are saying that Christ did not fulfill <laughs> the law. <laughs> he strengthened <laughs> the law. He made no. the law stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay. So, but now you've said he fulfilled, he fulfilled the law. The law. Mm -hmm. Continue. You know, he fulfilled the law mm -hmm. and all its requirements. Yeah. You know, the law, the law is holy, as mm -hmm. the word says. The law is holy. You know, but you cannot obtain holiness from the law. Mm -hmm. Because each and every requirement that the law gives, you are not able to fulfill. Mm. Because I bet if you are, then there was no need of Christ coming to down the cross. Okay. Because now through the law, which and uh, sin demanding death and all that, man could have been able to provide that by himself. Okay. But the law does not provide righteousness. No. 
Wow. It's only Christ that provides righteousness mm -hmm. by believing in his work. By believing in his work. Wow, wow, wow. That is that is interesting. And I see our time is up. And uh, I would like us for the in the next episode we'll come and talk about the 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 ministry of the New Testament. And uh, you've mentioned something to do with Hebrews. Yeah. Uh, I'd like us to come and now get there dwell into that yeah. and uh, get in depth and see what the ministry of the New Testament it is. Because there are some people who we wonder. So Sasa Kutoka Leo, Swell Nasoma New Testament. <laughs> but you see that. Uh, in our next episode. So thank you for being with us. We have been with uh, Samuel Onyango. Thank you so much for being with us here. And uh, we believe we'll be together even in our next episode. And uh, uh, you are very, very much blessed. Maybe you can say a word of prayer for our viewers today. We pray. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you. For we have been blessed by eating the bread of life. That is in your Christ. Just thank you, Father, for us to go on and explain more concerning the word and, and everything that has been provided for us on the cross. Thank you, Father, for the ears of those who are listening are opened, their hearts are receptive to the word, and, and we are not going to be the same again. Thank you, Father, for you hear us all the time. Thank you, Father, for it is answered and done. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this is has uh, this has been Beholding Christ show. This is Ben Fetcher and uh, you are here on Wema TV. And we call you blessed because indeed in Christ Jesus you are blessed. And remember, it is not of works lest you should boast. It is by grace through faith. Yeah. Amen. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you in our next episode. Amen.